Hello and welcome. My name is Tris Magistus and this is Factorio. This is a playthrough as Woob Software updates it. Last time we sort of bootstrapped our way to uh, the basics. So we have a, a tiny little, let's see if I can see that, tiny little uh, science production facility here which is not running because we're not doing any research. We're also producing some belts. I should go and top these up because they're running a bit low. And uh, we've got radar there which is finished. Oh, sorry. Which, no, still going. Looks like it's still still scanning away. We've noticed some biters up here and over here. And I got the very basics of a smelting array going. We did just research lights, so what I want to do is put some lights down around this array here. To do that, I need iron and copper. It's not full up. Uh, is that run? Oh, it's run out of run out of raw materials. So we should pop it down next door. Yeah, so let's make some lights. Let's make six of them or something. And we'll pop them, pop them down here. Uh, I'm just gonna plop them, I don't know, sort of here. Get a bit of light on the situation. I'm gonna pop some lights over here. And here. And then I don't really need them over by the furnaces because they're they'll produce light as they are but we might as well stick a few in run down the belt get a little speed boost cool so we can now see what we're doing a bit better so what we can do we've got our blueprint here one thing I didn't do is make ourselves a, a blueprint book which we can pop in our thing there and I'll right click to open that and we'll drag our blueprints into that uh, and now we'll put all of our blueprints in here. As we get more, we will be able to scroll through them and things like that. What you can also do, one of the functionalities they added in 17 is copy and paste. And what you can do, especially if you hit literally Control C, like you would imagine, uh, and you do that, for example, then it will make a copy of those and you can pop them down. I'm not actually going to use that because we've got our blueprint on the go. But one of the things with the blueprint, with the copy and paste, if I that won't have stored it but you would then hit Control v to bring up that thing and you can actually scroll back through all of your copy and paste and it is like a an almost like infinite blueprint library you can do loads and loads and loads of them so we'll grab our blueprint there we will pop this down here pop that down there pop that there so we need to fill this one up with copper basically Should I pick these up? I could, see I could pick these up and sort of use them here instead. We could probably do with a bit more stone on the go. Oh, I've already got the thing here, haven't I? So I'll just stop that up and make us a bit more stone because we're going to need a whole bunch of furnaces. And uh, I need to get power to these, don't I? So if I... Do this. Oops, don't want to overlap that really. Pop that there. It's probably going to be more efficient for me to. Or, more, or easier, really, not efficient. But if I move this back up a bit, say move it up here, pick all this up. Need to decide what I'm doing with them. But if I then do this, where is that underground? So if I take coal underneath all the time, have a splitter there, do, and then we're going to have something there. Actually, I can ghost this, uh, and that would be there. Actually, we be ghost that the time in, and then ghost these here, and I will need a. there. Yeah. So this is uh, our outline. So that'll be copper. So I'm going to want to, how many of those have I got? I'm going to need a couple more. 
So I can grab them, and we want lots and lots of belts in there. So if I pop another one in, because I'm wondering if we want to get another research going. We could build steel. What I really want to do is heavy armor, which requires steel. And probably military too, which requires green logistic science packs. So to do that one, because we're going to have to go, go out and hunt for oil, I think, just so that I at least know where it is. And that will allow me to set up a steel array, you know, when the time comes. Yeah, so let's get this going. So what I want to do, again, I want to probably take this underneath rather than... I find it's useful to have a, a system, basically, so you always remember which, which way you're doing things. So we want the... Which way round am I going to do this one? If I do this under here... I'll put that in the wrong place. But, oh, well, right. And then we'll take this up. All I'm really anticipating with these is uh, that... I need to build some more of them. Is that... Uh, We'll use it to do, you know, um, some smelting to get us going, really. Uh, it's not any kind of permanent sort of array or anything. So um, I'm not too fussed if it's, you know, fairly ugly. So it's just a case, really, now of filling this out. Okay, so that's that connected. I need to connect up this coal here, don't I? So that's getting some material, some fuel, etc, etc, moving around our base. So what we can do now is we can just come and grab some basic materials. We'll be building steel of some description there. Uh, what I want to do is sort of pad these out, not pad them out, but you know, fill them out a bit more. Put some more drills on there as well. I say not great practice that I'm splitting this off. What I can actually do, I can use priority splitters to basically ensure, and I should have done that before, so our priority is the right. Okay, So it will now basically feed this down here yeah, as a priority. So only when that's full will it send our material down, which is what we want. You'd never want your power to fail really. So I can show you now, I think I mentioned, I talked through in the last episode how this all works. Uh, essentially, what we're finding now is that we're about half capacity with all of our stuff running. So I'll show that on the 10 minute graph. You can see how our power demand has ramped up. That power production has ramped up in response to our ramping up power demand. Some of the bits and pieces, as you can see, are only firing off every so often. So what we want to do before we do anything else is basically double our power array. You see how slow our science is because we're only doing, we've got one lab and it's that's it as it were. So we're going to grab those. We do want to stock these up with kind of what we've got. But what we need to do, will it be in coverage? It'll be in coverage. So we want to plop a, another boiler there and some steam engines there. Pop that down. Uh, obviously, we need to provide power coverage to these as well. Yeah. So we're all, we're all hooked up into the network. So now we see that our production chunk has dropped down. It was around here. I mean, we've now um, you know, doubled our production. So it's, it's down there at a quarter. Yeah, okay, and we've still got, yeah, still got defensive coverage there. So that's steel done. We will make the heavy armor research Shall we, or shall I do green? I might do uh, 75 and that's 30. If I do green, that'll take a while to chunk through. Uh, we'll probably run out of materials up at, up at the other upper area. As we'll pick everything up. 
I want to increase or double basically our uh, mining drill operation. As I hopefully mentioned last time, you use Q to pick up the thing under your cursor. Uh, it's one of the best additions to the game. It was actually a mod, a picker tool, it was called. When it came in, or rather when the you know when the devs in introduced it, I was I was quite so so dismissive. I will happily admit that. But as I say, I found it uh, is you know one of the best additions to the game really. So easy. And I, you know I, I use this because we're at a stage where a lot of stuff we're building for the first time. But in the end, I'll probably literally just be using Q and going directly to the to England. So we're just about in coverage, but I'm going to plop in a new turret. These are really more, how to put it, it's like a response up level. Of, you know, if, if we get a bite attack, this level of turret coverage will kind of just save our stuff, really. It's just save our behinds. It won't repel a, a significant attack. I do want more assemblers because we are going to start some proper automated production. Yeah, it, it, you know these wouldn't risk repel significant attacks. It just—it's almost like giving us a bit of breathing room. We're going to have to put stone production in as well. Pollution is edging up towards these guys. You see how this is? So most of our pollution is in the mining, and you see how it's only gone this far here, but it's all the way up here. And that's a combination of these trees, which are absorbing pollution for us, and the fact that this type of terrain is less absorbent to pollution, so it's spreading a lot further. But what we've got up here is we've got some fairly significant nests at this stage of the game. This is more, because we've got two nests there, and then three and three, and those are sufficiently close together that they'll probably defend each other. Um, so actually we've got six nests up there. One of the things I think I will do, just to help out with sort of coverage of the area, is plop in some additional radar turrets. Uh, radar, radar turrets. Radar um, stations. So these will give a better coverage and also expand our view out a bit further. I want to make two of them, don't know. So if I, I'm going to plot one in here. Uh, one of the things with the radar, they have a permanent reveal area, so we can now fully see this if we zoom in. Whereas in this, it's still fog of war. Uh, and this is like radar you know, coverage. So if any biterness, biters you know, want to form a nest, new nest you know, here, I can see in this area. So I can, if they, you know, suddenly some red blobs appear there, I can see that. Uh, we'll make another laboratory. See if we can't double our sort of science speed. I don't know a single assembly machine will really keep up, but you know. This is a trick you can do nowadays. You didn't used to be able to do this, but it's chaining of labs. And these, so actually, well, I'll show you rather than tell you. I'm going to grab these belts as well. Might as well put a good chunk of stuff in there. So we'll just I'll just you know show you take a little while because it is a bit slow. Oh well it just happened and I wasn't I was I had my eye on something else. So what happens is that it uh, takes that and passes it through uh, and you can chain labs. Now the reason it's not really effective is because if we look at this, each one of these only takes five seconds. So by the time it's but you know made one of these red science packs they take five seconds to craft but this machine is slower than five seconds uh, these have a as it says does it say crafting speed of 0.5 so it takes twice as long so it's actually taking 10 seconds to produce a pack and only five seconds to consume it so this will not keep up okay uh, and that's our ultimate sort of goal we will be building up lots and lots of machines to make things in parallel and therefore giving us an effective system because what I'm thinking is if I bring another line of, um, so what I can do, you see, I can put some more drills in here. And take these up. Oops, no. And rather than do it quite this way, because what you can do is we can blend these together and then take an offshoot. That's not going to be very efficient, but you know, as I mentioned before, we're not really about efficiency at this stage. 
And it's one of my sort of philosophies of the game, which is just get on with it. If you need to produce stuff, produce stuff. Don't sort of hang around trying to work out perfect ratios and all this sort of stuff. Get the thing going, make the stuff that you need, and then want, then you've got the luxury of time, and you can make it as perfect as you want to. But get the thing going to start off with. Yeah, so what I can do here is a little trick that you can do with... We've got input and output priorities on splitters nowadays. And what we can do is we can say, prioritize the left, but filter for... I, I think, and it's, I think it's a common thing throughout the, the community, is you filter on fish, because you're almost never going to have fish on a belt. Okay, and what that does, it just stops it putting this on here. Uh, but what I will actually do here is I will output priority left. Okay, so this will make sure that we've always got some iron going along, and then whatever material we've sort of got left will then go to steel production. Uh, because steel is quite resource intensive, but you don't use as much as it, certainly at this stage of the game, uh, before we've got our you know, full production up and running, you don't use very much of it really. I might as well fill this out to get our production a bit more significant. What I'm going to do for steel is use a little trick that is, I think, quite clever. So basically, uh, let's have a look at this here. So a single iron plate takes uh, one bit of iron ore to craft and takes 3.2 seconds. Okay. A single bit of steel takes five iron plates and takes 16 seconds to, to make. Okay. So if you multiply that, so iron plate times five, to get the five iron plates you need to make one piece of steel, then you'll notice that five times 3.2 is 16 seconds. So in other words, in the time it takes to, for, to produce one piece of steel, you will cook five pieces of iron plate. Yeah. So what you can do is have these, so effectively this one of these, and feed that into another one directly, uh, and that will produce the exact number of iron plates. So the two match up. Now that doesn't work later on in the game because you get modules and beacons that speed up and slow down at the crafting speed. But at this stage, that's perfect for us. Yeah, that's a nice little trick we can use. You don't have to do that. Like we could have, you know, a line of iron plate and you know feed it into a bunch of furnaces and make steel from them. But as I say, I like to do that little trick. So what we want to do next is the heavy armor. Okay, we notice with the green science we've now unlocked a bunch of other stuff, including a few safe res. I mean that was there already, but you get a few what I call sort of safe researches, which is like this inv inventory one. Uh, what's another good one? Landfill's fairly safe to do, um, and that's going. Oh, and of course we got the damage and and shooting speed. Uh, we should really do do them next because we're going to have to go searching for biters, uh, searching for oil basically. Um, but you can do them without worry about, you know, this thing I said last episode about how you can get overwhelmed with the amount of stuff that you're su supposed to be building. Um, yeah, so we'll build that. And that gives us a reason to have steel up and going so that we can make, make one of those. Because one of the things, when you're making a steel, you still need coal. Yeah. Uh, so we need to be able to feed in iron, uh, the coal as well. Um, so I'm going to come up with a design that lets me do that, essentially. But I don't need that to go down. Because what I'm wondering about is I could do a thing. I could do, because we're going to need to smelt stone as well. We're going to need stone bricks. Um, so we could put that here rather than next to this this thing. And that's fairly convenient because our stone is here. So we can just take bring it up, basically. Uh, and rather than feed it down, we can feed it up. Yeah. Um, yeah, let's do that. So we want a blueprint. We want to put in this here. I'm not actually going to fill it out, but this is for stone. Okay, and instead of coming down, we will have the stone coming up like that. What I might do is leave a bit of room, and in case we need to expand iron, so we'll plop that in there. Because uh, you do need quite a lot of iron, and that will be able to grow. You know, a long way down without really interfering with anything. And then if we have our actual steel production here, uh, and how about I do it as a completely separate build as it were. So 
As I mentioned last episode, I always like to build them each time, just because it's I enjoy doing that the most. Because you can transfer blueprints between save games, and you can download blueprints, uh, and that's you know it's fine if you wanted to play like that. But the bit I most enjoy about the game is is sort of designing the the, the stuff. Anyway, so what I was thinking is we could have because if this is if that's for example if that's um, I've got the coal on the outside, haven't I? So. And uh, that would be the outline. So that would be coal there. Ooh, we've got quite a big bite in this there, look. No sign of cut no sign of oil though. Okay, so that would be coming down there, wouldn't it? And then that's our output and then that's potentially coming down there. All right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so that would be like that. Yeah. So that'll do stone. This will do stone break. This will do. Uh, that's a sort of a, a backup line, as it were. Uh, then. So what I'm thinking is, if I can, I do that. That'll work. I think. Really. So if I put that like uh no I don't have to do that, I can do that like that. So the idea is that's that's coal anyway, right? And so I bring iron ore down the side there. And they both feed into a furnace, and then that furnace feeds into Another furnace. I need to build a few more of them. Have I got stone? Yeah, I got loads of stone. Uh, and that builds it feeds into another furnace. And that furnace there, um, which I'm, I'm outputting normally on that side, has so that would be steel coming out, and this is more coal going in. Yeah, does that make sense? I think that works. And then we put an underground there. So this needs that needs to be iron ore eventually. Uh, and then we want oops, that's our thing done. Uh, we can do researches like this. Well I can't do that one obviously, but we can do our steel axe, which just increases our chopping speed, basic manual chopping speed. Um, Okay, so we want the reverse of this, so we want them there. Is our setup. How am I going to power that? Could get a little messy, but not too bad, I don't think. So this would be. Well, I can, I can show you copy and paste in action. So uh, do Control C. And then drag that over like that, uh, and then I can just uh, plop that on top of that one, yeah, so that I know how where to put the inserters in. So we want our power poles. I need to fill these in, don't I, so that power transfers over. Put that there, that there. So how best to power this? Because that would reach. How about something like that? Yeah, so I'll just fill these in just in case. So what I can do now is build ourselves a blueprint like that. Uh, what I'll actually do, I'll change the symbol so that I know what it is. Yeah, uh, and I might actually do that on here. So that's my steel one. That then is my iron plate one. You can actually rename them and stuff. I don't. I don't usually bother. Um, and what we can do now. So this is the. That's the iron plate one. And if we scroll, we'll hold shift and scroll uh, the mouse wheel. Uh, it will. It will run through the ones you've got. Obviously, we've only got two, so it's just flicking between them. Um, 
So we'll put a bit of... We'll just put one extra in. I want to get some turrets down as well. Okay, let's get some lights down as well so that it's easy for you to see what's going on. That's a bit easy to see, isn't it? Um, no, 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 no. Shall I, if I finish off steel production? Because what I can do just to, I might need a separate you know, line and stuff, but what I can do is just take this over. Oh, you see now how, because steel axe takes 50, uh, each one takes 30 seconds. So these these can now properly run in parallel, um, and it's one of the trickier things to the game to like balance up the timings, and and the basic strategy that I think pretty much everyone uses is just to go overkill. You just have loads and loads of production, and if your labs end up starved, as it were, it's not not disastrous. Yeah, I'm just trying to look for any problems or issues that I've missed, but they're all producing producing steel, so that looks fine. We've got our iron uh, all through there. Um, I might fill this in now that we're actually using steel, or oh, producing steel run, um, and put another turret actually on. Ghost some more stuff in, uh, so I can get a better feel for what's going on. This is what I was saying about the decoratives. You can, it's difficult, I find, to tell where the edge is, and it won't let you place a, a drill where there isn't all. But it's very easy to you know, think you've filled up the, the area and, and actually you've missed a bit out. Like this, there could be easily be some iron ore at the top there, um, and I wouldn't realise until you know until too late that I'd, I'd set everything up wrong. Basically, um, I don't know why it's a habit I got into, but I only usually leave like a one gap between them here. Uh, two gaps, you know, a two gap, which is the maximum extent, does work. I don't know. I've sort of just got into a habit of of leaving the one gap there. I do generally, I quite like to have lights near my uh, turrets because then, you know, if I get a warning message that they're engaged with something, I can quickly look and see what's going on. Because now, we, especially now we've got radar coverage, I can quickly zoom over to that area, you know. If there's some something going on there, I could zoom in and see what's happening, what, how many biters are there, uh, is the turret, you know, going to be able to cope with it or what, really. Okay, so that's sort of set up. We probably want more coal production, really, to be a bit safer. Um, and pop that there, and there. Get some belts in. Get our turret. I'd like to go with it. And that. Okay. Uh, I want to set up the stone before I end up end this episode. Shouldn't take too long. Yeah, 65. So I can make some steel armor just quickly because I need some belts, you see. So I can run over here, grab these belts, fill this up, pop that in there. Oh, we're still making that armor. What I might do, just very quick and dirty, is plop a um, an assembler here. 
put that there, and we'll get this to make us some ammunition, rather than handcraft that all the time. Actually, let's do stone walls, because that's relatively quick, and that gives me a use for um, this stone brick that I'm, I'm about to, to set going. Stone brick, steel. I might actually have stone as well. I can't. Uh, hmm, yeah, it's used in a few things, stone, but it it might be useful for us to, to get a bit of landfill production going. It's always useful to have a bit of landfill. Whoops, landfill kicking about. Okay, you see, so that that was quite quick. So uh, what I can, what I will do now is the damages and shooting speeds. These buff our actual weapons as well as the the turrets. I want the damage first. Move them back because I think that's stone there, isn't it? Yeah. So. There. Oops. R key just rotates the uh, the orientation of anything you're holding. So that's them going. So if I put some lights down on there, we want the radar down. So that we can see what's going on if anything attacks. So that's stone brick going up there. That's you know bits of stone going up there. That's then being made into stone bricks. Stone bricks have a slightly different crafting time. Where are they? Does it not show them anymore? Oh no, there they are. With the, even though they're sort of, you know, this is meant to be intermediate products, and yet stone bricks are there. There are some odd things in the how it, how it sorts the inventory. Um, anyway, so those take two stone, you see. So these these here, they all take one. Well, copper plates and iron plates take one bit of copper ore, but stone bricks take two stone. So effectively, it's, it's 1.6 every... So it's like, it's double, basically. So we'll just grab some stone brick. Uh, I think I mentioned... A lot of players seem to pave their entire base. I don't do that. What I tend to do is have paved, paved, you know, tracks, as it were. So, what we'll actually do, because we've been you know, running up and down this a bit, uh, I'll pop some paving underneath our thing like this. Whoops. Uh, you see how intense, you know, sort of resource intensive it is. Actually, do I need that to be that wide? I could just do it. Um, where's it gone? There it is. I could take them up, couldn't I? To pick it up, you need you need to hold, you know, it's because it's too wide. You use plus and minus to make it uh, bigger and smaller, okay? Uh, and then left click to place it, and right click to pick it up. But you need to be holding it to pick it up. So you, I can't just mark back it. I'm right clicking or holding right click and nothing's happening. You have to be actually holding the brick to pick it up. Yeah. So yeah, we use this as a sort of a thoroughfare. Can you see that it is quicker? And then if we run on the belt, it stacks. So it's even quicker. Yeah. So it is, you know, it is useful, and I do sort of understand why people do it. It's just for me, it's a bit of a bit of a waste of time, really. Because eventually we'll get power legs, and they'll basically allow us to run at super speed anyway. And again, it does stack with what, whatever's on the surface. But to me, just use your, your legs and save the pollution. Our next phase here, what I'll actually probably do is see if I can run round and ah, oil. 
Okay, we need to go and investigate down here and see what's what's happening in this area. Maybe set up a little defensive structure so that any biters that decide to try and colonise this, if they haven't already, are deterred. That's excellent, actually. Great timing. We are very close to annoying these biters. So we will also have to go and deal with them, I think, next episode. Again, the strategy we're using, as I mentioned in last episode, is, is defend the cloud, basically. So we defend the pollution cloud, and that will avoid angering the biters. We will still have to, because evolution is on, occasionally, you know, say, for example, these biters might form a little group that will attempt to colonise this area. As they run in, they'll find my stuff, and they will attack my stuff. That's, that's basically the mechanics of how it works. We've got all this ammo. Lovely jubbly. I'll actually take that down to one stack. That is where we are going to end the episode. If you've been watching, I hope you've enjoyed it. and You, you might consider coming back for another one. I've been Jules Magistus. This has been Factoria. Thanks for watching. Cheers.